you're a home buyer, somebody or a young person looking to buy a home, you need a bit of a reset. There, there is a possibility on the other side of this that that uh, inflation could be could actually be quite. The low. survey found more than half of recent buyers regret taking out a mortgage when rates were high. Seventy eight percent said they were at least somewhat stressed. Interest rates will remain high for the rest of the year and 84 percent plan on refinancing to a lower interest rate in the future. Welcome back to Real Estate Mindset. Today's video is going to be absolutely bonkers. Now, the data is in and today we're going to go over the recent buyer's remorse survey and we have a very detailed report to go over on why people regret purchasing their houses over the last two years. Now, obviously, guys, there's two types of people right now. There's the people that are obsessed with purchasing a home, and then there are the recent homeowners that are depressed about not being able to leave their home because they are starting to realize that they purchased a house based on emotion during the worst time in history to purchase a house. And then we're gonna talk about and help answer the question, how do we avoid, again, how do we avoid buyer's remorse. So I got a jam-packed video for you guys today. And if you guys find value in this video, please like the video. Let me know that you found value. Comment below. Hit notifications, guys. It really helps out the channel. But I want to start by listening to one short video, and then we're going to go in depth into a recent survey that has detailed responses on why people regret what they did. Buyer's remorse is starting to hit many new homeowners who rushed to lend a house during the frenzied market that we all saw during the pandemic. If you're one of them, you're not alone on this, folks. One expert says there is one thing to consider if you want out of your hasty buy. The frenzied real estate market we all witnessed across the country and here in DFW the past two years caused many home buyers to pull the trigger on something they're just now realizing they did not want or need, according to experts. They were fighting so hard to win that the winning became more important than winning the right property. Instead, they were more concerned with, about winning a property. Michael Perna is with Keller Williams and says the trend of buyer's remorse isn't just in North Texas, but across the country. In fact, Zillow recently put out some numbers suggesting 75% of those who bought during the pandemic feel remorse. Many of them cited waiving inspections and not knowing exactly what they were buying as the main reason water issues that were uncovered after the fact that they could not deal with. We saw insurance issues come up. We saw HVAC issues come up. All of these things that would have been found in a home inspection had the buyer had it, but since they didn't, they're running at 10 or 20 or even $30,000 worth of issues down the line. Perna says hmm. for those who didn't have that problem, some of the regret is rooted in buying the wrong house. So a couple things on those two videos. First of all, the first video said that 93% of recent homeowners plan to refinance. Think about that, guys. 93%. If you purchased a house with an expectation that you're going to marry the house and date the rate, you must like abusive relationships. That's for you, Mr. Watson, who came up with that. But the thing is, guys, is interest rates have gone up so far this year. And most people, even if they could refinance into a lower rate, which they probably can't, they would also have to have the equity in order to do that. One of the criteria to refinance is loan to value, okay? Or having enough value in the collateral, which is the house, so that the lender will lend to you. So we're gonna go into the survey, but I'm really, what I'm trying to say is, is if you're on the sideline, just chill out and use the fundamentals to purchase. And I'll go over that towards the end of the video on how to prevent yourself from getting buyer's remorse, but let's look at the survey. This is a really good survey from the Real Estate Witch. This has a lot more questions than normal, so it's actually very intriguing, and it's actually gonna go into the people on the sideline and the regrets that they have for not purchasing. But the name of this article, which will be linked in my description, and for linking it in my description, one more time, like the video, if you like me linking the data in the description, the name of the article is, or survey rather, is Millennial Home Buyer Report, 2024 edition. So they're going to really hone in on millennials. Okay. So let's read a couple of this right now, because some of this stuff, guys, is absolutely shocking and depressing on what is going on through people's minds. And I hope the people that are watching my videos aren't going through this. Millennial housing woes have often been pinned on their long abiding love for avocado toast. What? And fancy coffee. But those vices are hardly the only barriers standing in the way of home ownership. 78% 
saying a home purchase is still part of the American dream. So obviously millennials are desperate to live that. And a lot of people feel like if they don't buy right now, they'll never be able to live up to the dream of home ownership, the American dream, when the reality is that's false. It's just we have a situation and it's a little bit, it may take a few years, guys, but we have a situation to where we just need to hit pause. It's a temporary pause. It's not a permanent pause. And again, this is just in my opinion. Now, 48% don't think home ownership is affordable for the average millennial. And honestly, that should be 100%. 100% of people that were surveyed should know that the average millennial is priced out. Even if they wanted to purchase, they are priced out. Now, a lot of people can rebudget, work on their credit, their purchasing power to get out of that situation. And other people cannot as a result of quantitative tidying and inflation and things of that nature. Now, take a look at this, guys. This is going to get really interesting now. This is interesting. So one third of millennials, 33% feel guilty for owning a property when so many of their peers want a home but can't afford it. And this is what I'm saying, guys. There's a predominant amount of buyers that were just lucky. And if you don't think that they were lucky, and oh no, they were savvy because of low interest rates. I'm like, come on, guys. It was two and three percent interest rates. I mean, my child could figure that out. I mean, do are we really patting them on the back for that? If they're savvy, then how I mean they got lucky. How was anyone supposed to know about the lockdowns? How was anyone supposed to know about the massive record-breaking equity run-up. No one knew that. And therefore, a lot of it was luck. I mean, come on, there's nothing wrong with that. So, you know, I would say that they should feel happy and not guilty. It is what it is. 93%, okay, of millennials say the market has impacted their home buying plan. So 93% of millennials probably have a negative feeling about the housing market. So that's smart. You should have, you should be concerned. You should use fundamentals. You should learn how to buy real estate. 76% are concerned it will get worse before they buy a home. And honestly, it's, you know, it, it's, it's already getting worse to be honest with you because we don't have our bust yet. Now, 42% of millennials expect to make concessions. Now, these are people that are potentially purchasing a home. So the reason I highlighted that guys is, you know, almost half of millennials buyers are already defeated. They're already going into home purchasing home ownership with the premise that they're going to have to sacrifice what they want in order to buy a house. And I'm going to tell you guys, that's wrong. You should not feel that way. Buyers right now, well, unfortunately, buyers are still getting beat up in a lot of metro areas, but you should Wait as long as you need to get your purchasing power back because of how unbalanced it is. So some markets, buyer's markets, some markets aren't. New homes, buyer's market, existing, not. But the regardless is don't settle on something that is the biggest financial transaction of your life. Don't settle on that. Now, when it comes to sellers, 26% expect sellers to lower their price. Honestly, it should be 100%. It makes me upset that that's not 100%. If you're watching this video, you should expect the seller to lower their price. If they don't, walk away. Okay, that's just my opinion. 96% of millennials are concerned about purchasing homes. So now they're smartening up, right? That Now they're smartening up. Now the concerns are here. This is interesting. What are your biggest concerns about purchasing a home? So the highest ones were not finding a home that fits my needs, having to make major repairs. That's a good one. And not finding an affordable home. That should be number one. So that's the three-way tie for number one. Now the fourth is not my down payment will be too small. That's probably why they're borrowing from their parents. And 30% good, they're waking up, my home value decreasing. We already know it's decreasing in some metros. That is a fact. We don't have to guess. We don't have to use our motion, especially in areas along where I live, in Texas, New Orleans, San Francisco. I mean, there are some areas that are really, really in bad shape. Alabama, Mississippi. Now, 29% say the housing market will crash. Good. You're thinking, that's good. You should be cautious. Now, 25% worry about not qualifying for a mortgage. Honestly, guys, it should be more like 70% because I can pretty much guarantee you 70% of these people cannot qualify for a mortgage based on today's interest rates and home prices. 22% think not being able to afford their mortgage. Again, very, very low. Should be a lot higher. I don't know only why only one in five people are concerned. Very crazy. Now, half of millennials say high interest rates are a barrier to home ownership. And you guys can see here, 50% thinks that interest rates are too high, where only 46% thinks that home prices are too expensive. 
Honestly, that should be flipped. It should be a lot more people concerned about the prices of homes and less, less concerned about the interest rates. Because again, I've been saying this, I've been beating the drums, price is more important than payment. Sales agents use car dealerships, sell people on payments. That's why Canada and Japan have extended some of their loan terms to 40 years or even doing interest only loans because they don't want to go down on the price. They would rather you pay the higher price, but have it to where your payment is less. By the way, making the lender a lot more profitable, by the way. Now, 42% are concerned about saving for a down payment, 39% saying the market's very competitive, 36% saying qualifying for a mortgage. Very, very interesting stuff here, guys. Now, this is also interesting. 78% of home buyers would consider accepting an interest rate that's higher than the national rate of 7%. So this is like the obsession. So like, the, you know, but also it could be good. Just depends on why they're saying that, but it's still an obsession if they're not, if their reason is this price, right? If it's not because of price, then I think they just want to get a house to live the American dream. I mean, do you agree with me on that? Again, if they would take a higher rate because of a lower price, that makes sense to me, but I really doubt that that's what the survey is saying. And here you guys go again, higher interest rates have affected 96% of millennials home buying plans. That's crazy. Most people are saving for a home at 50% and other people are trying to make more money, which is 40%. 33% are saving for a down payment. So you guys see, uh, where's credit? Nothing credit, but you know, credit is what you want to uh, improve. Income, as you can see here, and assets, so savings. So the only one that's not on here again is the credit that should be on here. It's not. 70% of millennials say inflation is still affecting their home buying plans. I don't know why 30% say that it's not. <laughs> I mean, it's affecting my plans. Isn't it affecting your plans? I would be buying right now if the prices weren't so elevated. Wake up 30%, wake up. <laughs> now take a look at this FUMO question right here. Two thirds of Americans or millennial surveyed, which is 68%, regret not purchasing a home when prices were lower. If you guys wallow of, you know, not purchasing in 2019 per se, understand it's okay. All right. Understand, you know, if you were to purchase in 2020 and in 2021, remember bidding wars, waiving contingencies, appraisal gaps, purchasing a home online. I mean, it's not like we could just go out and buy a house in 2020 and 2021. Don't forget that. Don't be ashamed in yourself. A lot of people couldn't buy a house even though they wanted to. It was just a horrible, horrible situation. And we had a massive lack of inventory. Don't forget that guys. Now here's something that's really depressing and we're gonna go into some data that is just, it's just sickening, absolutely sickening. But regardless you guys, one in nine millennials, so over 10% of millennials would still offer $100,000 or more over asking price for their dream home. Now to the one in nine millennials that are saying that, first of all, we don't know what the price point is. If the price point is 5 million, 100,000 is nothing. But if the price point is 100,000, an extra 100,000 is a lot. So we really don't have context here. But what I will say is, why would you pay more for something than it's worth? $100,000 is a lot of money. And if you're just going to recklessly, you don't care about your money, you're making a mistake and you're ruining it for the rest of us, especially the people that are migrating to places that are more affordable. If you're not getting a good deal, we all suffer for that. So make sure you're getting a good deal because again, when you buy things $100,000 over value, you create something called a comp. A home sold is called a comp that comp can affect the value of all of the houses in the subdivision. So stop going over asking prices, my point. All right, now, according to the survey, guys, 25% of millennials worry they won't qualify for a mortgage. That's crazy to me because, again, 70% or more don't qualify for a mortgage. So the fact that they're not worried about the things that they should be worried about it's concerning to me, right? To me, it reeks of like, I'm just gonna spend my money, comfort bubble, lack of patience, instant gratification. I mean, you should be worrying about a mortgage. I qualify for a mortgage right now, and I'm still worried about a mortgage. You should always be, maybe not worried, but aware, right? You're aware of what you qualify for at any given moment. In fact, what I tell people is, is if you plan on purchasing in the next six months, get qualified for a mortgage because if you don't qualify, a loan officer should tell you what ducks you need to get into order to qualify. So you don't want to go qualify right before you buy a house 
Again, in my opinion, you want to go six months prior to purchasing. Make sure your finances are in order. You guys, the next two things really hit me in the guts. This one especially, 85% of millennials. Again, let's fathom this. 85%, and I'm a millennial somehow, 85% of millennials would buy a home sight unseen. I wonder if that attitude is why we have a 90% buyer's remorse for millennials purchasing houses. If 85% of them think, just let's just buy a house, let's, who cares, right? Let's just keep our heads in the sand. This Everything's going to work out. I'm just stressed. I just want a house. I just want to move on with my life. Who cares about the inspection? That attitude is wrecking them. Buying a house, you guys, is 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 so important. It can fall apart. You got your AC to worry about. You got your foundation. You got your roof. You have to worry about how you're purchasing. You don't buy real estate sight unseen. You need to smell. You need to go outside, see if there's a dog barking, see if it's next to a train track, see if the previous tenants smoked in there, right? You have to tour the property. I can't even believe I'm saying this. I can't believe I'm saying this. 85% would buy a house un sight unseen? My God, this needs to change. This needs to stop. People need to slow their roll and stop obsessing so much. Y'all, this one really hurts me. This one hurts me the most right here. This one, uh, you guys, 67%. 67% of millennials would purchase a home with asbestos or mold. So can you tell me that people are thinking clearly? If they're willing to endanger their life, their time in this world, their time with their family, expose their children, their spouses to mold and asbestos, can't we say we have a obsession problem with purchasing a house? I mean, can't we say that? 67 freaking percent asbestos are mold. Are you kidding me right now? Comment below. Let me know how you feel about that. Are you one of those millennials? Would you purchase a house that had asbestos or mold? Comment below. I'm interested to hear. And here we go, you guys. 90% of millennial homeowners have regret about purchasing their homes. Okay. Now, what's interesting is, is that's actually up from 82% in 2023. So they did a survey in 2023 as well. And they recently did a survey starting 2024. And that's gone up. So people that purchased last year, it only got worse. It didn't get better. There's even more regret, not less. This is crazy, but here's some of the reasons, you guys. 27% say bad location, 26% bad neighbors. There you go with settling again, right? They're settling, settling. 25% say interest rate, 22% say interest rate. As it's basically a mortgage is too expensive. That's price and interest rate. 20% outgrowing home too quickly. What? 19% buying in an area that changed too much. Also, a lot of these people were not prepared for the hidden costs. Okay. Think about this guys. The average homeowner spends nearly $17,500 on property taxes, insurance, maintenance, like probably utilities and stuff and repairs. There is a lot of costs that can go into owning a home. So don't overextend yourself. Let's talk about how to avoid buyer's remorse. Now, the first thing is you have to look at this transaction like a business transaction. I understand that when it comes to buying your primary residence, there's a certain, really a large element of emotion because again, it's the American dream. It's where we raise our family. Most people just want to buy a house. They don't look at it as an investment or a flip or a rental, but y'all, you cannot use your emotions to buy real estate. These professionals that have been doing this long enough, they know how to take advantage of your emotions. It's not like we can be emotional and then you know trust the professionals in the business to hold us accountable. The only people that will hold us accountable is ourselves and our emotions interfere with that accountability. So do not use your emotions to buy real estate. Use fundamentals. Understand things like wedge, which is equity. So buying a home that already has equity, okay, or wedge, and understand cash flow. Understand how your local housing market works and understand that value is generally determined by the subdivision, not macro. It's all localized. The more that you understand about how these things work, I'm telling you guys, the better off you will be when purchasing a house, especially if y'all are first time homeowners. If y'all are first time homeowners, please listen to what I'm saying. 
A lot of people do not learn the lesson until it hurts them. And when it comes to buying a house, if you get hurt buying a house, you don't, you can't just walk away. That thing will follow you. It can lead to foreclosure. It can lead to unhappiness in your house, in your household, all things that happened to me. And if you guys really want to learn more, I have a free home buying class that I pay for every single month that I offer to my viewers into the community of real estate mindset. I want to be one of the guys you can lean on that at least has a pathway for you guys to empower yourself, a pathway for you to prevent buyer's remorse. So take the home buying course. It's going to tell you about credit, income, assets, how to shop for a mortgage, what to ask a seller for, what's the difference between price, what's the difference between payment, what investors are asking for, what wedge is, what cash flow is. But regardless, this is my gift to you. All right. I don't want you guys to learn how I learned. I had a foreclosure, repo, tax lien, bankruptcy. Nine years of my life, I had to dig myself out of a hole where they, man, society just wanted to keep me down. I mean, I couldn't get credit. No one wanted to hire me. I lost my confidence in myself. I lost my family. All things that happened because I made a bad decision when purchasing during the GFC. So in other words, guys, don't be part of the problem. All right. Think about the people that have just purchased and think about what they're saying. A 90% buyer's regret is a massive red flag that you and I should take seriously. Now, other than that, I hope you guys found this video valuable. I hope you guys gained some new insights and perspective. And if you're out there investing in real estate, you already know I wish you luck and I hope you win.